Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Paint by Minis. My name's Adam and this week we're following on from last week in a way. We're using our Necron model but we're going to learn about basing and specifically I'm going to show you how I base with a Martian theme. So we're talking desolate red rocks. Let's get started. The beauty of this is that you really only need a few materials. I've got some small pieces of cork, I've got some small stones, I've got Vallejo texture paint and then I've got a couple of red tone pigments. So if you've watched any of my other videos you'll know that this texture paint that I use is actually my go-to for basing material. The particulate that is in the texture paint itself is super fine and much finer than most sand products that you'll find on the market and because it's all pre-mixed in with acrylic there's no real need to use glue or anything like that it's fully self-adhesive and the other plus side is that it's already got paint in it so if you want a brown mud you don't need to do any further painting and it comes in a pretty huge tub i've had this about a year and i've not even scratched the surface on it the next most important thing in this technique is actually the pigment powders themselves the pigment powders i've got here are humbrol brand which is quite a popular brand here in the uk for model makers but honestly any brand of pigment will do even just some chalk pastels that you can crush up will do what you're really looking for is like a dark red magenta type of color and also a much lighter or almost orangey color these two are actually described as rust colors but they work perfect for a mars base so first step is just to grab your cork and just pry off a couple of small pieces you can see that they make some pretty convincing rock and the benefit of using cork is that they're super light compared to real stone so it's much easier to glue them on you can just push them through into the vallejo texture paint you don't even need to use super glue so now you've got your rocks all picked out, you just need to start laying down the texture paint. Because it's Mars and Mars is quite arid and deserted, you don't really need to build up that much texture. And if we put a thinner layer on, it's going to dry much quicker for us. I would definitely recommend using an old junky brush for this step. You don't want to use any of your decent brushes for this. The little particulate in the acrylic will get caught in all the hairs and it's just not worth the hassle. Because this model comes with a bit of pre-sculpted terrain around the foot, just make sure that you're butting the sand up fully against the rock so it looks more like it's resting in the sand and not just sitting on top of it. So just take your time, work around the model and just make sure that all of the ground is at least a little bit covered. Don't worry too much about getting this texture on the model's feet. It's going to look like it's walking in the sand anyway, so it's not too much of a problem. But if you do get a little bit too much on the foot, just get a damp brush and wipe it away. So next up is just a real simple step, we're grabbing the rocks that we made out of the cork earlier and we're just going to place them around the Necron's feet. Again because he's got a little bit of pre-sculpted terrain around the foot already, I'm just going to nestle the rocks in there to make it look a little bit more natural. So you want to do this step while the texture paint is still wet and because we're using the cork rocks we don't need to use any additional adhesives, we can just let the Vallejo texture paint hold them in. And I'm just going to do the same with these smaller rocks. I'm just going to use the old junk brush again and just scatter them around. You don't want to put these all over the base, just put them here and there so the terrain has a little bit more variation. Once you're done with this step and you're happy with all the placements of your rocks, just leave this a couple of hours to fully dry. With that all dry, we'll start on the pigment. So start first with your magenta or dark red colour pigment and just work this all over the base like you would any other paint. Every now and then it's worth just tapping off the base into the pot of pigment just to get any of the real loose bits of the pigment off. You'll also notice that I'm working off a piece of kitchen towel. This pigment can get real messy real quick, especially as you're dusting it off and shaking and tapping bits off. It's worth just putting a bit of scrap paper or kitchen towel underneath where you're working. It just makes tidy up a lot easier. So because we're using the pigment, you'll find that we're actually getting through this real quick. You don't need to wait for anything to dry as the pigment's already dry. The only downside of these pigments being that they don't really fasten themselves to anything. They're loose and they have no binder, so in time all of this will come off. We're lucky in a way that the magenta colour is quite strong and permanent in its own way in that it stains the model quite a bit. But I could definitely see if you were handling these models daily or weekly, if you were taking them to games, I could see this being not ideal. So if you are a gamer and you want to use these, I would definitely put a vine 
varnish over the top you will lose some of the earthy sandy dry kind of texture that we get when we use the pigments but you'll be saving yourself a headache because you won't be getting this rubbed all over your fingers but if you're like me and you just enjoy the process of painting a model these bases will be absolutely fine for the occasional handling and as long as they're stored somewhere safe you won't really notice any pigment loss so with the first red pigment all applied we're going to move on to our lighter orange pigment so once again just take a small amount and tap it here and there throughout the base to create some color variants of the reds you'll notice that if you tap them quite hard you can really get these to blend together because neither of these pigments can dry so you can blend them together to your heart's content just be careful not to completely overdo it with the lighter color you want to still retain some of the darker red undercoat so that there's more variance and it's more interesting to look at so just quickly finish up the model by painting the rim black and we're done so I hope you guys enjoyed the video, it's a real simple and easy technique and it really only takes a few tools to get the job done. I think you can use this Mars basing technique on any miniature really, but it will really make any blue or green or silvery model stand out a lot more, because orange, green, blue, these are all complementary colours, so use that colour wheel to your advantage. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.